And you know I got to do this one here, man. It's the homie Keith Wright, man. You feel me? Keith Wright, man. I knew him when in my teens when we started grinding on G Street. You know what I'm saying? He from Metaview. We had a Metaview team. We was grinding on G Street in our teens. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I got caught up and ended up going to the boys camp. And from the boys camp, you know, Keith was always big. We was always athletic. So he started playing football. And back then, you feel me? They were sending those boys to the NFL and shit, to the league, to college and shit. You feel me? So I believe he started playing for Washington, you know what I'm saying, for a minute and stood out. Bam, and got drafted to the NFL, man. You know what I'm saying? And I think he was on six different teams, if I'm not mistaken, before, you know what I'm saying? He retired, came back. He was supposed to go to the out the country and play, but got caught up in Sacramento, man. Sacramento is a death trap, man. So he bought him a spot on the Thomas. We was big chilling every day. And he liked to gamble a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? But slowly but surely, man, I seen the homie start getting back in the streets, man. It's intoxicating. He started wanting to do things that, you know what I'm saying, street niggas do. And that's what happened when you influenced by your environment and you come back home and shit and start hanging around the dudes you used to hang around. So, man, Keith was used to the man being a celebrity, man. You know what I'm saying? Dude always had, you feel me? Hella females and shit, you feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? He always had... That's what got him transferring a lot of... To football teams. We used to sit in the garage. He was building his Mustang. And he used to tell me about how he used to get transferred from all his football teams and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll always end up fucking on one of the top team players' bitches and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he had a lot of run-ins with other players on the teams that was more established than him. And they got rid of him. But, hey, Keith was humongous. You feel me? So... You, he was built for the NFL, man. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because he had the he had the new uh what was that like UConn Denali and something, man. You feel me? And he loved his son, man, so much. You feel me? We used to ride around and have to listen to like you feel me him slapping uh you know little cartoon songs for his son in the back and you know what I'm saying while we was chilling and stuff, man. But yeah, man, you know, he got back to sack and got back into his old ways, man. You know what I'm saying? And needed money. You feel me? And um, yeah, man, he got back to what he used to know how to do, man. And he lived down in the Thomas. So, you know, I guess he started, you know what I'm saying? Creeping through places and stuff. And this is a cautionary tale I like to tell women about, even though this my homeboy, he caught a lot of y'all single women slipping by y'all selves in y'all homes at night. And this was a humongous man. he come in and rob your ass and leave it out the door. That's how they call him, man. He cut, You feel me? He was making bitches suck his dick and give him some pussy and shit. That's why they gave him all them years and shit. And there was nothing you can really do. He was powerless. So he was making females take him to the... To the uh, you the bank and pull out money and everything, you know what I'm saying? And you really couldn't do nothing. He was making bitches suck his dick with the gun to their head late at night, slipping in the Thomas. So when they finally caught up with him because he made a bitch suck his dick, you feel me? And she had semen in her mouth. And man, yeah, um, they gave him like 200 years, man. It's probably one of the NFL players that got the most years, man. You feel me? But... Hey, man, I don't really know what went wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? We stopped hanging together because, you know, I was living with my baby mama down the street, and she was crazy. I just wrote a book about it. So she started tripping and shit. You know, I remember one time I had to have him come get me. I was like the bitch tripping, but I remember, hey, man, you know, he started looking at me weird. You feel me? So, hey, man, you know, next thing you know. Man, I hear this shit didn't happen, man. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't seen him since, man. You feel me? So, yeah, man. The, but the homie Keith, he from the hood, though. He from Meadowview, man. You feel me? For sure that. For sure that. He, he he was with the business and everything, man. We can't forget his name, man, or have him stricken from the record, man. And he did make it to the NFL, man. You feel me? Owned the house and everything. He did that, man. So, if anything, it's a cautionary tale about, you know what I'm saying, how they draft these young black men 
because they built like this, but they don't ever teach him nothing to give him no future after that. So, man, you know, he had to figure it out. And then sack, man, man, people don't make it out of sack. So if you do, man, don't come back. Yeah, Keith played for Sacramento City College in 1999 and was an all-Big 12 defensive end in Missouri. And then he was drafted by the Houston Texans and signed to a million-dollar contract in 2003. Then he bounced around the NFL, you know what I'm saying, getting in little skirmishes here and there with, with people on the team, you know what I'm saying, for the next few years. And then he last landed in Detroit in 2006. August 29, 2011 is when he was arrested for robbing and sexually assaulting a victim during a home invasion on Kokomo Drive in North Natomas on August 21st. Investigators say Wright entered the home through an unlocked door, robbed the victim at gunpoint, then sexually assaulted her. Detectives were able to link the crime in two other home invasions where he did the same thing that occurred that same summer. In each case, Wright threatened the residents at gunpoint and demanded money. One victim really didn't want to tell on him because he took her ID and told her he knew where she lived and he had come back and do something to her if she said anything. Yeah, this was some cold shit.